Hi YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be teaching you guys how to identify every single ghost type in Phasmophobia. I am not going to go around get find every single ghost type. It's just going to take way too long. I don't really have time for it, but if you guys want me to do it, I can. I just need to find the right time. But for the time being, I'm just going to go through the book to get the to, to explain the ghost to you. So yeah, if you enjoy it, the video make sure you like and subscribe to the notification and let's get in to the video. Alright. Right, I'm not going to so Susan, I don't know the last name. But I'm going to quickly get out of the truck so my truck timer doesn't go up. No, I was explaining. Alright, so the first ghost I'm going to be teaching guys how to identify is the spirit. If you guys don't know how to identify the spirit, all you have to do is you the only thing you need to do to identify the spirit is have a smudge on you, smudge near the ghost, around the ghost, where the ghost is at. You can even do and do in a hunt, then start a timer and after the hunt and wait. The ghost will hunt or won't be able to hunt for sixty um ninety seconds if if it if it a noble ghost, but the spirit will hunt at three minutes in the um when smudged. What that means is you like have an extra a minute and thirty seconds of being able to not be able to get hunted. So what you do? Don't use any curse object. By the way, you need to make sure you don't get any hunt wide. It is is. To do the spirit test, grab the phone, any timer, and as soon as you press right click, start a timer. And when the timer is going, if it hit 90 seconds, then it's um, it can't be a spirit. But if it hit 3 minutes and it hunts in that 3 minute time, then it's a spirit. So let's move on to the next ghost, and the next ghost is the Wraith. The Wraith is a very simple, easy ghost to identify. What you do is the a Wraith can't cannot step in salt. What that means is the ghost would never be able to step in it, leave a full step for you be able to take a photo. It can't. It's history is it can at all. So what you do is you go to any doorways, this is the way I know how to do it is you go to a doorway and place free salt line like that and then when you have the salt pile like that you grab the motion sensor and you just put it right there so what that means is the ghost steps in the salt it can it cannot be a wraith but if it steps in it and it does the footstep and you can take a picture of it then it's then it c it can't be a wraith. The wraith can't it will never step in the salt. But there's also another way to identify the ghost if you want to go an extra mile. Uh, the wraith have a I don't know what the percentage chance to teleport to the player. What I mean is the ghost will teleport to you no matter where you are on the map. And if it does that, it will leave a EMF two right at your feet. So what that means is, if you have an EMF three to right here, say the wraith teleport me, it will be EMF two for the fifteen seconds. So what you do then is think about it. Have anything around you. Have it touch the door. Turn on the light switch. Because if it d turn on the if it, d it d if it didn't do any of that, then it's a wraith. But don't go off thinking it's a wraith from just it doing the EMF two. As soon as you get EMF2 without... Oh. If you get EMF2 without um, the ghost, without any doors or light switch to be touched, there's three other ghosts that can um, roam to your location, slash, or Wraith can only teleport, but the Banshee and Phantom, they can roam to your location. Where you are on the map, they will roam to you and they will just do stuff where they are. So yeah, that is how you identify the wraith. Then move on to the next ghost, the phantom. 
So how to identify the phantom is is easy. The phantom is like an easy ghost to do. It just depends on if the ghost wants to do a ghost event, or you can use a hunt to identify the ghost. So how you use the a hunt though to identify the ghost is you know the usual blinking of the ghost where um hold on let me show you I can get a hunt. So let me go grab a hunt. Be on my side. By the way, to identify a phantom without the hunt. What you do is, if you take a photo Okay, that's a regular time of flight if, if you take a picture of the ghost and it doesn't show up in your photo Or your photo is not glitching Then it's a phantom The other way on identifying a ghost is I might have to move, have to move The ghost is right there I will get to this airball. The airball is very important. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's just my luck. Jin. Alright. I will show you how to identify the Jin in a minute. I just had to get through every single ghost. Oh god. <laughs> they go back to Tanglewood. Alright. That's my luck, by the way. I need just get a hunt. Perfect goes for me to be able to show you some stuff with Theogen, but um, I don't know. <laughs> Depends how this game wants to give me. So that was just that was that was just mean. <laughs> All right, so I brew doll and start a hunt. So you see the blinking of it? 
If you see the ghost blink less than that, then it's um, a phantom. But this is not a phantom. Not a phantom. So it can it can be a phantom. Alright, let me get out of the house because I'm gonna get train haunted. So it won't be able to be a phantom because if you saw that blinking, that was regular blinking. Nothing was just normal blinking of the hunt. So if you get that blinking, then it can't be a phantom. But if you see the ghost a lot less, to the point where you barely can not see it, then it's a phantom. Alright, let's move on to the next ghost, the Portergeist. The Portergeist is a very easy ghost as well, by the phone, um, both without a hunt and a hunt. There's, um, so Getting a hunt with a Podergeist is the most easiest way on identifying it from my case. But the um, harder way to identify it um, is putting a bunch of items in a pile. Like, grab a bunch of stuff <coughs> and just chuck it in the pile like this. And if it just does a big yeet, as uh, throw all this all at once, then it's a phantom. No, I'm a part of guys. But if it, if it doesn't do it, don't lie on the ability itself because it's like a chance for it to be able to throw all the stuff at once. So, here, when you get a hunt, the hunt I got, if it, it goes to throw a item, like 50% of lead, every 2.5 seconds. But a part of guys have a 100% chance to throw item 0.5 seconds during the hunt. So if you just hear the ghost starts going mad and throwing items like crazy, then it's a um, pot guys. But if it just throw item now and then, and oh yeah, there's also something with pot guys. Even during the hunt, the, a chance for it to do the big yeet, what the yeet mean, it, it will throw the item further than you other items. So if you see it throw your item far from the usual location, it's most likely a podergeist. And mainly reason that how you identify um, a podergeist is just using if throwing to identify him. So if it throws um, a bunch of items in a pile, it's a podergeist. If it um, throws item every 0.5 seconds, then it's a podergeist. But if it doesn't, if it throws item now and then during the hunt, 0.5 seconds, or be able for an item, then you can, it won't be a part of guys. So let's move on to the next ghost, the Banshee. The Banshee used to be like a very powerful, not very powerful, but fun ghost. In a single player, the only way you can identify it is the, the Banshee will always do more seeing ghost events than the other ghosts. Don't be fooled, other ghosts can just keep doing single ghost events. But um, the Banshee will always, not always, but will do um, single ghost events more often than other ghosts. So how you identify the ghost is with the power bottom microphone, you point at the ghost room. If you hear a scream, then it's a um, banshee, but if you just hear the a whisper, then it you can't rule out um, banshee from just a whisper. You need at least four to five whisper to fully rule it out for you to count it as um, not a banshee. But you still have it have one in three chance of doing it. So yeah. So another way, if you're playing multiplier or with two um, more people than just the one. Uh, the best way to identify the ghost with that is get a hunt and have like two people in the open or like all four of them in separate corners. If you see what person it's going for, keep that in mind. Then the person that it was um, focusing hide and then the next hunt 
you go and see if it goes will target any of you. If it doesn't target you, and it doesn't kill you from you just touching it, then it's a um, Banshee. So that's mainly the best way on identifying the Banshee. So let's move on to the Djinn. I had the Djinn last round, but you know what, the, um, the Hank man. So the Djinn is a is another easy go to identify. Well, not easy easy, but you can learn by a behavior. So a Djinn, you can identify a Djinn by um, standing far away from the ghost, but not too far because it can still speed up. So what you want to do is you want to say you in the garage. I don't know if I'm near hunting, but you want to be in the garage. So you'll be in the garage. You'll be over here with a smudge stick. If the ghost, if it's a gin, the ghost will um, turn that corner and be fast. As soon as it gets close to you, it will slow back down. But from the far distance, and it can see you through the hallway, it'll be fast until it um, get close to you and then it'll slow back down. The other way to tell if it's a gin or not, if, if, it, if it turns off the breaker, then it can't be a gin. But if it never does, of course the ghosts have a chance to not be able to turn off the breaker at all. It's just luck. But mostly just, if it turns off the breaker, rule that gin because it can't be one. So let's move on to the next ghost, the mare. The mare... The mare can be like a difficult ghost sometimes. But how I came to be able to identify the mare is there's a cutter ability where if you turn on a light it has the chance to immediately turn off that light switch like straight away so what i mean is when you want to test for mare have an emf reader on you because it's gonna be your best friend so what you do is you go to the light switch if you turn on the light switch and it like immediately just turn it off and that mean it's a mare, but the w w way to tell a mare is say the ghost is in this room, and from the book of it, it is, say I turn on, you see how the light's on? The mare does not like um, lights being on, so what it will do is like, oh, it will say like, oh there's lights in the room, I'm going to roam to this room to be in the dark. If the ghost keep this is what the mayor will do, it will just roam into a dark room if there's light in there. But the mayor will do anything to turn off the light. It will break the light, it will have more chance of doing the ghostman that will break the lights. And it also um, will turn off the light switch a lot more often to be in the dark. And it will just change, um, it will try to change a different ghost room into a dark room to get away from the light. That's also something I don't see people using that much, but yeah, I find it a real good tip. If the ghost... Oh! This is also something I need to say. If the ghost... If a, if a ghost turns on a light, it can't be a mare. A mare cannot turn on light. So if it turns on a light, then just um, rule it out because it can't. But the other way on identifying the mare is in the dark if you're in the dark and the ghost is in the dark it can hunt at 60% sanity but when you're in the light and both you and the ghost is in the light it will hunt at 40% sanity so yeah if you're in the light 40% sanity you can hunt at and if you're in the dark you can hunt at 60 so that's how you identify the mayor let's move on to the next ghost the revenant the revenant is a much scarier ghost now I find the ghosts a lot more scarier now since the change they have made in the patch show in the 0.8 update. So what they've made is the Revenant will be slow without a line of sight. If it detects your flashlight or have anything to know that you're there, it will speed up and go to that location fast and then it as soon it loses that line inside of you, or it doesn't detect your flashlight voice. It will slow back down and be a snail pace again. The first step you heard doing that one hunt I got, that's it won't be. A, it's not a revenant, 
So that first step was completely normal. So when you get revenant, you will hear the. Well, I don't know if you can hear what I'm doing. Because the first step will be much slower. And then when the, the revenant get in the line of sight of you or detect your flashlight, like I said, it will be fast and it will go to your location. But if you have one sight, it will be fast until you, you break line of sight. Actually, they made a change where when you break the line of sight, it will, it will be still fast checking your last known location. As soon as you check your last location and lose sights of you, and you, you, it doesn't see you after you check the last known location, it will um, slow back down. So that's how you identify a revenant. Let's move on to the shade. The shade is a following ghost, but it's like a it's like a counterpart to like the oni, we say. But we will get to the oni in a minute. So the shade can only hunt at 35% sanity. Um, the shade will do a less interaction. A shade cannot do a ghost burn at 100% sanity to I think like 9 well it can at 90% sanity it can but it has a, a small chance of doing it but if you start just started the game and you just enter the house and it does the ghost burn it won't be a, it's not going to be a shade in any slight so if you get a ghost burn at the start I'm like at the 100% sanity range or um, in like the 90, 80s or 70 less likely for it to be a shade. Of course, 90s, 80s, and 70s, it can still be it, but it's just a low chance. There's like two, I think they didn't fix these bugs yet. There's two things the shade is meant to do, but right now they are bugged. And one of them is the ghost won't be able to hunt while you're in the room, and it won't be able to throw any items while you're in the room. But right now they both are bugged. So, if it hunts, if it doesn't hunt until you get, you get below 50% sanity, then it's not, um, it can't, then it must be a shade, because a shade can only hunt at 35% sanity. Alright, let's move on to, um, the demon. Give me one sec. Alright, the demon. The demon is a master of early hunt. Any ghost. Beside Mare, Demon, Yokai, Raichu, um, Fae, the Truins, all can early hunt, and um, Onryo. They all can early hunt. But the Demon is a hunt, will hunt you at 70% sanity. But it has a, it, it had the old Banshee ability where it can hunt at any percent sanity. So it can hunt at right in right when you get in the house. It can hunt at any time. And the ghosts have some weaknesses that overpower it. The critter fix will affect the demon a lot more. So the range of the critter fix is a lot bigger. Let me show you the critter fix range. So this, right here, is how big the crucifix range is. A demon has it bigger. So if, if you say you put the crucifix here, and it goes hunt right here, um, then it might most likely not gonna be a demon, but it can still. I don't. It can't be a demon if it hunts here. But if the crucifix range, since it comes like hunt where I am standing. The critter fix will be a bit bigger, like it will reach like half of that bed. I don't know how big is the uh, demon range, but yeah, I think it's like five meters. Why the other critter fix is free, but yeah. Also, the demon after a hunt will not hunt you until 20 seconds, but when you smudge the ghost, I will, will repel it. Not repel it like as doing the hunt. Cleanse. When you cleanse the room, um, the ghost, or cleanse the room, the ghost won't be able to hunt for 60 seconds, the demon. So if the ghost hunts at 60%, um, 60, um, percent sanity, then it's a demon. 
Any other ghost can hunt at 90, while spirit can hunt at 3 minutes. So if it's 60 seconds, it can't be a demon. Alright, let's move on to the next ghost, the Yuri. The Yuri right now doesn't have like the best ability. It, the Yuri, maybe Benji is like a standoff for being the game. You had to wait in the game for long to try to. You had to be in the game like for 20 or a couple minutes for it to be able to give you a ability. Sometimes you can get lucky, sometimes you can't. So the Yuri has this. All it has that is useful is a Yuri have a chance to fully close a door, fully shut, without doing a ghost event. If you if a ghost shut the door officially like that, and you don't see any air ball, you don't see it. The ghost didn't show up, then it's a Yuri. But th right now, I think there's like a bug where the Yuri will open the door outward. So how you identify the ghost if it does that is if you hear a double touch on the door, on the same door, then it's a Yuri. And then your sanity is drained by 15% sanity. Besides that, that's like the only best way on identifying it. The weakness right now is absolutely not really worth it. But if you want to use the weakness, Right now, I think it actually is bugged, or what, I don't know what it's up with it. But when you smudge the ghost, this um, Yui was not, is not supposed to leave the room when smudged. So when it's smudged, it has to stay in this room. It will wander around the course and do all the what ghost does. But it can like, go into like, a different room. I we have freezing, don't we? But... If it runs in a different room after you smudge it, then it's a spirit. Alright, then move on to the next ghost. I think that meat is pushing it. Hmm. So, don't be fooled by the way. If the ghost touches the door, and you walk into the door as they get touched, you will be able to close the door. So don't get fooled by it. So, let me find the next ghost, Oni. The Oni is a active ghost. He's pr it's pretty active. It does like, it does like, mm, it does ghost event a lot. It's like, cr it's like fully active. A like active ghost to its maximum. So how you identify Oni, it's me and also let me do the rule out. How you rule out a Oni e in the first place is if the ghost does the air ball, the thing you saw last round before I got the Hank Man, then it can't be an Oni. The blinking, again, if you see the ghost a lot more, where it's rarely invisible, then it's an Oni. The blinking I showed you was normal. If you see the ghost like mostly all the time, then it's the only, and the ghost will, the ghost always. W okay, there's also something I need to explain with the only, by the way, and that when it does a ghost event and it touches you, that sanity drain is doubled. So that 15% sanity or 10% sanity you was gonna lose, and it's the only, it'll be like 20% sanity or 30% sanity you lose. So yeah, I also have to go about something with the gin by the way, and the gin has this video where you put an emoth at the breaker, and it... You put the emoth at the breaker, or it drains the sanity by you just being around, nothing happening, and you hit the emoth to at the breaker, then it's the gin. But let's move on to our next ghost, Yokai. Either Yokai, it's a fairly simple and easy ghost to identify. The yokai go um yokai have some things going for it. And one of them is if you talk around the ghost and you blow eighty percent sentry, it has a chance to hunt. Um again on um hunt. Because it doesn't like you talking, it just wants quiet and stuff like that. So what you do the using Talking around it, trying to get a hunt, 
you know, really the effective way on identifying um, a yokai. The best way to identify a yokai is when you go, so you, you started a hunt, you hide behind the, um, the garage door or whatever door, and you just talk. Do you, um, any other um, ghosts, every other ghost type can detect your um, equipment by 10, 10 meters, while your guy is 2. So if you just talking around, say, like, hey ghost, I'm here, and it doesn't come to you, but of course you're going to try it multiple times, but if, if you keep talking and it just keep walking past and everything like that, then it's a, um, then it's a yokai, but if you say, hey guys, I'm here, and it just comes straight in the room, then it can't be a yokai. So, yeah, that's maybe the best way to identify a yokai. There's no other, um, ability I think the yokai have, because when you talk near it, it is going to be a bit more active. It will do a lot more ghost event. But beside that, that's all the yokai have, from my um, knowledge. And let move on. I said let move on to the next ghost. No one is touching. Okay. All right, Hantu. It won't be a Hantu this round because it was speeding up. But Hantu in nightmare mode will always have freezing. Freezing temps. If the, you don't see uh, freezing temps in nightmare mode, then fr freezing temp, by the way, is the breath you see as soon as it pops up. That. If you see that breath, then it's freezing temps. So when it's freezing temps, that means um, it can be a, a hantu. But, how you identify um, a Hantu is by the hunt. You can mostly identify the ghost doing the hunt. So, so how you identify the Hantu doing the hunt is when it's hunting, in the cold room, it will be fast. But in the hot, warmed up room, it will be slow. It will just slow down, and it will never speed up, so you can loop it the whole time. Also, if you turn off the breaker, you can see the Hantu freezing breath. It's not really useful, I just say you use the uh, um, looping around the ghost and, and see if it's fast in the freezing room. Also, the Hantu will drain your the room temperature to make it slow, um, faster. So you don't want to like, loop in the same room. But beside that, that's how you normally identify a Hantu. And that's from my knowledge. So let me move on to the next ghost. A Goya. Goya is going to be a quick um, explaining. Because it's like a very easy ghost to identify. How you identify a Goya is when you're in the go um, The Goya can never change its favorite room. What that means is how it's in the nursery. Say this were a Goya, it will never be able to leave that room. Of course it can roam out, um, it but can't do a lo long, a far roam, it can only do a short roam and then it'll be like, Let me, I'm going to get back in my room, stuff like that. If it just stays in the room most of the time, never change its favorite room, then it can't be, if it changes its favorite uh, ghost room, then it can, cannot be a Goya, but if it change, um, it never changes it, it can, uh, it, 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 it is a Goya. By the way, I'm just doing this um, video in one shoot, so if I miss talk or miss say something, let me know in the comments. Also, the Goya will always have um, dots as its evidence. So what that means is, no matter what happens, dots will be always its evidence. So how you identify a Goyo from the um, dots projector is when, hold on, if the ghost, when you have a go dot projector in the room, you can't see, can't see the um, dots without a photocam. 
if you see the um a video camera camera actually if you see um dots without a video camera or you're in the room then it can't be Goya. but if you see dots in the camera but not in um not out of the camera then it's Goya. but mainly that's all for you have let i say let's move on to the next ghost and that's miling the miling is a quiet ghost so what that i mean is the miling The mining will all, um not mining doesn't have any force evidence, but the only thing it has is um it will do power bottle microphone a lot more these stuff it will do a lot more whisper everything like that. When you far away from the ghost, you can the um the distance you can hear the mining from is um is lower. So they. You can only hear the ghost 20 meters away. Miling, that's 10. And a miling, maybe that all like mining how. Yeah. You, the ghost is just quiet during the hunt. And if you have the miling, um, if you hear the ghost from far away and the light is not blinking, then it can't be a miling. But if it, if you in, if the light is flicking, not flicking, and you don't hear any footsteps or the ghost down, then it's a miling. And when it enter the flashing, the footstep will be quiet until it get, get closer to you. So that's how you identify miling. And move on to the next one, a on Rio. A on Rio is identified by using candles. Um, if the Onria will always hunt when it blows up three candles. At, at the third cam candle it blows out, it will start to hunt. But it, it's like not like a medium instant hunt after it blows out the candle, it will like take five to ten seconds for a hunt. So, how you would like to set it up, it's Okay, the ghost is having a shower this time, this one. Let me show you how to set up a on it. Sorry. I'm not going to grab the other for the fix, but this is how you identify it on Rio. Is you put candles in its room, and if the um, ghost blows out the candle three times, I recommend having only one candle. But if it if it blows out the candle three times and then uses the critter fix, then it's on Rio. But if you use the critter fix while the candle is on, it cannot be on Rio. Mainly that is how you identify the um, on re just doing candles trick. Like what I show you here. Is if the ghost uses the critter fix with the candle on, then it it can't be a on um it can be a on rear. But if it, if it blows out the candle free the free time and then it starts the hunt, then it's on rear. Alright, then we want to the next ghost, the twin. Alright, so the twins is identified by say there's like say if phasmophobia added like two different ghosts in one house. What that mean is the twins is two separate ghosts. So well mainly it's one but so the twin you know the ghosts have like a center area that it can interact with interact item with um, and if you if it throws an item um, it will just throw items like usual in that interaction right but if you hit one item get thrown and then another item get thrown at the same time then it's a trend or 
I have a way to identify the trends is if it touch like two doors at once. As touch the one in nursery and the one the closet at the same time. That's the trend. Also Dong Yahan, the decoy is faster than the uh, main guy. So if you hear speed different doing hunts then it's the trend. And so yeah, that is how they identify the trends. Let's move on to on Ria. No, not right on Ria. Raichu. The Raichu will be Raichu will be like a normal ghost, like usual. But when there's electronic nearby, it'll be it will speed up, it'll be fast, and it will just um be like faster than the usual ghost. Um if the ghost um speeds up um it Alright. So if you, if it uh, speeds up round equipment then it's a Raichu. But if it doesn't if if it doesn't speed up round equipment then it can't it can't cannot be a Raichu. Also Raichu will affect your equipment, your like flashlight from further away. So don't be fooled by it, because you may fool it and think it's like a yokai which I didn't talk to real, so... But yeah, that's mainly the easiest way to identify a Raichu. But if you have items in the um, electronic in the room, the um, Raichu have the chance to hunt at 65% sentry when there's electronic nearby. Um, by the way, Onryo can hunt at, um, um, 60, by the way. But, 65% certainty if there's any electronic nearby. And, yeah, that's mainly how to identify a Raichu. Obake. Obake is identified by, um, if it touches the door, it will the fingerprints if you have a fingerprint door goes. By the way, before I get into that, um, the Barque will always have um, fingerprints as its evidence in Nightmare Mode. It will always have this. So no matter what, it can not be able to... If you don't get fingerprints, then it, uh, then it can't be a Barque. But don't be fooled, don't rule it out. If you have no other evidence, and it touches doors and doesn't leave fingerprints. Keep in mind, Obake have a seventy, um, twenty-five percent chance to not leave fingerprints. So if it touches a door and doesn't leave fingerprints, and then it touches another door, then leaves fingerprints, then it's um, Obake. Also, the Obake will change to different ghost models. Doing um a in for like one two second doing um between blinks, the blinking you saw from me leaping the ghost um in that one the hunt hunt. If it changed ghost model from maybe being that ghost model to like naked man, and then back to him, and then to the axe guy, then back to the person, and then to any male ghost type. It only can say shift into the male type or female type it is. Um, it can only be in the uh, genre it's in, but mainly that's how you identify a bucket. Um, the mimic. The mimic is easily identified. It's probably like the easiest to identify and rule out. So what you have to do is, if you see, if you do not see orb, then it can't be a mimic. A mimic will always have orbs. It may not be ruled out here, but from if you see the weakness, the weakness right here. Um, in the report, I have noticed ghost orb sighting near mimics. I mean, the mimic will always have um, ghost orb. Doesn't matter if you have zero evidence, it won't be able to give you ghost orb. So if say you're in nightmare mode and you get three pieces of evidence, like say you get all of that, then it's a uh, mimic. Because you can only get two pieces of two piece of evidence. 
So that's main, and also the mimic would mimic other ghost behavior. Say, one second it might be mimicking a revenant, or might be mimicking a demon, oni, um, a phantom, poltergeist, any of them. But every, I think every minute or two it changes ghost type, and every time it finishes a hunt, it will change what um, ghost is mimicking. So. Never jump to the collision on the ghost type because it can be any of them. So if if you don't see ghost orb or the ghost being the same, then you can rule out. By the way, if the ghost type is say it's a revenant, mimic a revenant, it won't be able. Well, it has a chance to be able to um, mimic the revenant again because I did had it the. Um, round a couple rounds ago, I did had it mimic the revenant twice, but that's just a chance. But it's so unlikely for it to choose the revenant again, because it's like 23 ghosts it can pick. So um, also it can turn it into itself. A mimic can mimic the mimic, and it can mimic the player. It would just be a normal ghost from there. I'm Roy. How to identify a Moray. If you get a Moray, if you get a spear box response, because Moray will always have spear box as it evidence. So if you get spear box, hold a candle, and if your sanity is still going down with your candle, then it's a Moray. And also, a power button microphone and spear box will um, trigger the curse. And your sanity drain will be double um, um, drain twice as fast. So that's mainly how to identify um, the Moray by just getting a spear box, um, spear box, rather holding the candle or just noticing your sanity is draining faster than usual. But mainly that, that's all it had. And also, actually, I was about to say that was all it had, but that's actually not true. Cause the m the Mori, um, at a hundred percent senti will be slow. It'll be um, slower than um, every ghost type. Um, it'll be so slower. And then when you lose senti, when as soon as you go below fifty, then it will start um, speeding up. It will just speed speed up to the um, maximum at zero percent senti. I think it's like two point. Or 2.7 speed to get to uh, meters, but yeah, if you see the speed change during the hunt when you're below 50, then it's a Moray. But if if it's just regular speed that you heard during that one hunt, I'm pretty sure the regular speed I see. Um, if you see hear regular speed and you don't hear it being slower, you can rule out Moray. A Diogen, Diogen is my favorite ghost type. I really love. Deogen because it's um, the thing. So how I d to identify the Deogen is you can go anywhere. You can be in the garage. You can be in hiding spot. But a Deogen can hunt at 40% senti. And it, since it, it hunts at 40% senti, and you cannot hide from it. The ghosts from far distance will be fast. And as soon as it gets to you, it'll be mega slow. It'll be like a snail. Just... It will be like a snail. So it will always know where you are at all times, so you can't... Cannot hide from it. You have to loop it. If you're in a corner, you're just dead. There's no way around it. It, it will always... It knows where you are at all times. You can't hide, but you can run. So that how do you identify a Diogen? A Diogen also have a hit um um spear box as its main evidence. It will always give you spear box and um the Diogen has a spear box special response. If you hear like a breathing noise, it sound like then it's a um, Diogen. I guess you can. Have so up and below you find where the ghost is exactly standing because you need to be like close to the ghost for it to happen, and you just talk to the ghost, do it through the spear box. If you don't get it, you can rule it out. 
Leave you got a um the again called it will be a Duogen or the Mimic. Don't get fooled by the Mimic. The Fae. Fae doesn't have any false evidence. But at the start of the game it will be fast. It'll be um young. But when you need a ghost, you are aging it every like thirty to thirty seconds to one to two minutes. You'll be aging it. But if you're not near the ghost when it does the uh, checks if any player's nearby, then it will reset the timer for another 30 seconds. Then it will just... Then if it doesn't check up to that 30 seconds, it will do another 30 seconds. And then it will just get slower the longer you stay near it. But the, um, the Fae will hunt at 75% sanity. Um, I think 70 or 75, one of those. But every time it age, that um, hunting threshold get lower. And this is something that were added because of Insim. If you ask the Ouija board how old it is, and say it's like 57, and then you need to go for a bit, and then you go to the Ouija board and ask its age again, and it's like f um, 60 now, then it's a fake. So that's basically how you identify every single ghost type in the game. Uh, it's just like, uh, so th like I said, that how you identify every single ghost type in Phasmophobia. It just, just learning the bittery or the hidden bittery from all the ghosts is just something. And uh, this is how you can identify them. So if you guys are struggling, I hope this helps. But yeah. I'm not gonna play this mission because I'm just wanting to show you guys how to identify. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Turn the notification if you wanna watch more of me. There's a handpicked video from me on the right. Click that one and you can watch more of me and I'll see you guys all later. Bye!